Before the Civil War, Wall Street was a very small place. Virtually everybody knew everybody. And the rules of the game could be enforced the same way the rules of a backyard touch football game are um, enforced just by peer pressure. But when the Civil War came along, Wall Street suddenly found itself the second largest securities market in the world, and there were no new rules. The only rule on Wall Street in the Civil War era was caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. This new game was perfectly suited for two men who made the most remarkable team in Wall Street history, Jay Gould and Jim Fisk. I think Gould and Fisk are the most comic pair of, of, of spectators that one's ever seen in history, because there was Fisk, all ebullient and, and lavishly dressed and pomaded with little ringlets and, and, and fancy gloves, and he used to wear fancy uniforms. He's, he's rather like something out of, uh, out of the opera. And there was Gould, a sort of sinister, dark, choleric figure. Uh, Gould is distrustful, dishonest, breaks everyone he, he, he comes into conflict with. In 1857, they became partners in an epic Wall Street fight, the battle for the Erie Railroad. It became the greatest speculative football in, in the history of Wall Street. In fact, so much so that it was called the Scarlet Woman of Wall Street because it broke the hearts of so many investors. Gould and Fisk joined forces with the thoroughly unscrupulous Wall Street legend Daniel Drew. Drew had made himself treasurer of the Erie and used the railroad stock to his own ends. Drew's principal interest in the Erie Railway was making money out of the securities by manipulating them. And even though he was treasurer of the railway for many years and served on its board of directors for even longer, um, he, had, he was known as a speculative director because he had no hesitation whatsoever to manipulate the stock at the expense of the other stockholders. Together, the three milked Erie stock shamelessly. But a powerful opponent also wanted control of the Erie. Cornelius Vanderbilt, known as the Commodore, one of the richest men of his time. Vanderbilt wanted to add the Erie to his own railroad empire, but he knew the railroad would never be honest with Drew, Fisk, and Gould in charge. So the Commodore decided to gain control by buying up Erie's stock with his enormous wealth. But the three speculators laid a trap for the Commodore. Drew, Fisk, and Gould had a secret weapon called a printing press. They simply printed more and more stock as the Commodore bought more and more stock. Eventually, the Commodore caught wind of their scheme. He went straight to a judge he had bribed and demanded the three be arrested. The judge did as he was told, but the three were one step ahead of the Commodore. Once they found out that the sheriff was after them, immediately skedaddled across the Hudson River in a rowboat, um, very nearly drowned, by the way, but they managed to get across to New Jersey with $7 million of the Commodore's money in cash, in a carpet bag. The fight continued in the courts and the state legislature. And when the dust settled, the Commodore got his money back, Gould and Fisk got the railroad, and the Erie stockholders got the bill. Just as the Erie battles were ending, Wall Street got a vital new piece of technology, the stock ticker.